you know, we all have within us, one of the points that I try and make in my book is we all have within us those instincts for violence, whether we know it or not, because of our ancestors. I mean, you come from an unbroken chain of success. Every one of your ancestors was able to live long enough to procreate and have their ancestors procreate, which is an incredibly rare and an incredibly, incredibly amazing track record of success. And a good reason why they were able to do that is because they have all these instincts and many of them have defended themselves in violent situations. Many of them have killed. Many of them have done what's necessary for you to be here today. And all of that is embedded in you. And in the modern world that we live in, especially since things over long-term trends, things have gotten better. I mean, we're in kind of a short-term spike of violence right now. But if we look big picture, every generation we go back, it gets a little bit worse in terms of violence. And um, so the downside to that is we kind of get out of touch with what, what I like to prefer to call primal instincts. And jujitsu is a perfect way, a healthy way for you to establish a relationship with that part of yourself. And I think that's important too. I think that helps people be happy. And I think you want to establish that relationship to that part of yourself before you're forced to establish that relationship in a way that might not be productive, in a way that would be shocking because it's, it's just thrust upon you. Well, that's a big part of your book is, is how uh, society has turned off sort of our natural affinity for violence and aggression, something that we often are taught to think of as, as negative things. And, you know, and often they are. We have sort of this uh, passiveness and this fear of aggression uh, that has kind of overcome us. Uh, but, you know, it also can have uh, negative consequences for our society. Can you perhaps elaborate a little bit on that? Yeah, I think, you know, one of the first, actually the first sentence of my book, and it's very intentionally the first sentence, is that violence is natural. And it's intrinsic to our existence. It's intrinsic in a way that I think very few things are. The only other thing that I think could compare close to it would be sex and procreation. It's that core to who we are as animals. And like sex and like issues that run that deep inside us, <clears throat> I think people often take um, one of two extremes where they'll glamorize or romanticize the act itself, uh, which is not healthy. And that kind of a reflection of an immature attitude towards it that can almost manifest itself in negative ways in a person's life. And on the other end of the extreme, you have people who demonize and repress those instincts as if there's something wrong with them. And, the, and that also can really be dangerous, uh, that head in the sand uh, approach. It's also not moral because all you end up doing is passing along responsibility for your personal safety to somebody else who eventually is going to have to do it uh, because there's nothing valuable or moral about allowing another person to put their hands on you and hurt you or someone, uh, someone else that you love. And so finding a balance between, you know, the, the pacifists that are demonizing the act itself in a way that I think is silly and the, what I call boy speak, but the people who romanticize and glorify violence somewhere in the middle there is a healthy approach, a healthy relationship to the topic. And since I think all of us as human beings, one way or another, have to have a relationship to the topic of violence, we are going to, at some point in our life, be forced to acknowledge that we have a relationship with this subject, with rare exception, that you want that relationship to be a healthy one. And to be a healthy one is to understand how to navigate between those two extremes and see, see it exactly for what it is and see it for the positive nature of what can be done and why it's necessary. We live in a world where there are, are now and will always be people who, when they see someone vulnerable and incapable or what they perceive as being incapable of defending themselves in the given moment, will rape and torture that person. They have always existed and they're not going away. And um, being able to manage that without turning it into a fetish or without demonizing it and, and, turning it into some kind of moral failing, I think is super helpful. I think it helps create better people. You know, one of the things, one of the sayings that we have from my friend, Paul Sharp, 
that we talk about SBG as one of our goals is to try and make good people more dangerous to bad people. 